Inamarium allows for fast, easy, and convenient processing and analysis of NMR data within a modern web browser. So let's look at a quick example. And in this case, we're going to look at acetyl acetone, which we've collected on a remote and automated Bruker 400 megahertz NMR spectrometer at icon.web where we set up and ran the experiment. We were able to view the experiment in real time. This data is automatically saved to data in the cloud at spinterp.com so we can um, download or view that data and download it. So download that data where any of these data sets we can download onto our own local instrument. And now, once we have this data, let's look at um, processing and analyzing this data. So if we go to Inamarium here, it tells you, you can drag and drop the file that we just downloaded. It went to my downloads directory. So I'm just going to click and drag that zip file, which is acetyl acetone collected in deuterated benzene at 298. Drag it here, and it has the original free induction decay as well as the Bruker automated process data that it shows here. Let's look at doing some quick analysis of this in Inamarium. So going through here, we can see we can kind of blow up the spectra. We can highlight certain regions. Let's start with peak picking. So it lists that there's no peaks at the moment. And let's just start kind of from left to right here. So we can kind of highlight this region to make sure we really pick the center of that peak. There's peak one. So we hold down the shift in the left button and it puts the peak along with the intensity there. We can double click to go back out and then move over to the next peak. So we can look here and highlight that peak and keep doing this for all the peaks in the system, all the resonances that we want to peak pick. There's a small one right here, we'll blow it up. And this is where it gets a little tighter. So we have two here. And then finally, so let's, while we're at this kind of, what we have, so this one's at zero. This is the TMS. So this is acetyl acetone and deuterated benzene with TMS, tetramethylsilane, as the reference at zero, which we can see it's been proper, the data has been properly referenced. If not, we could use this peak picking and give this the proper reference. And then going from left to right, so we have TMS. These are the methyls of both the enol and ketone form of acetyl acetone. This is the methylene of the keto, the methine of the enol. This is the deuterated benzene residual proton, and then this is the acid of the eno. So we've kind of peak picked all of the relevant peaks in this. Now, besides wanting to know the intensity and the exact chemical shift reference to TMS, the next thing you might want to do kind of going down here is to be able to integrate this so that you have the areas of these. So again, you click on the integral and we can again kind of start from left to right. And so we want to kind of integrate from baseline to baseline holding down. So there's the first integral. And again, doing it there. We don't really need to integrate the solvent. You could, but there's really no reason to. So let's go to the next peak. And we'll integrate that. And just like we did for peak picking, we're going to do that for all the peaks in the spectrum. So highlight, so where we want to start, hold down the shift, 
left drag. And it gives us the area here as well as kind of a classical summation. Now, here we have the methyls, and so we'll blow this up and highlight that one, and then this one. Okay, so now we have integrals for the methyls, methine, or the methylene, the methine, and the acid. And you can see it kind of highlights through each of these peaks. We don't need an integral for the TMS or the solvent. So now we have integrals. We can make those relative by telling it the integral sum of each of these. And we can even, to help ourselves, give it a molecular formula. It tells you that you can add um, the molecule in a mole file. So I've got uh, acetyl acetone. I get the mole file, and here you go. And so now you can even assign these signals. So we could have, this is showing the keto version. We could add to P2 the enol version, and then even tell it uh, which of the structures each of these is. So now we can look at the relative um, area of each of these to figure out how much ketone and enol um, is in solution, which will tell us the equilibrium constant for this. You also can do what you would normally do classically in organic chemistry, which is to verify assignment. If this is the enol acid, and this is the enol methine. These should be in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's 10.19 to 11.05. So basically both about the same. And then um, we should be able to highlight in here. And you know, this should so it should be in a six to one to one ratio. And you know, it's relatively close to that. While if this is the methyl of the ketone, and this is the methylene, it should be in a six to two or a three to one ratio. So again, we can kind of verify that we're getting the right ratio for the internal molecule of both the ketone and enol form, and then looking at the ratio relative to, for example, here, the methyl the six methyls of the keto form and the enol form will tell us the relative amounts of each of those in solution. So hopefully this shows you how easy and convenient it is for using NMRM to do basic NMR analysis. And you can also pick the ranges, assign them to the chemical structures as we go down here. You can do basic processing like phase correction for a transform of the free induction decay here. Go back, you can have multiple uh, spectra. You can import spectra. You can, once you have all this, you can export it or save it. So you can save it as an NMR fi NMRM file so that this analysis you've done, you can come back to later. Um, or you can also save the graphics if you're going to um, use them as a figure in a report or a paper. And so there's these are several of the basic features. You can also go to the preferences and add some of the NMR prediction and other more advanced features to this as well. So hopefully this gives you a quick overview of using NMRM and how you would use it for some basic NMR processing and analysis.